folks how are you today welcome back to another live stream from reach out reptiles very own garrett hartle garrett how are you tonight all right okay. well, i'm talking to your mic again hey guys this no, no, garrett talking this <laughs> hey, how's it going? got thomas back in the audio <laughs> how's everybody out doing uh, we're putting the word chaos in. Yeah, truly. Your mic muted, Garrett. Solid hey, light now. Man, this feels like our first show, doesn't it? Kind of is our our uh, way. our first show in a new right. era. But, uh, you got us. I got a solid light. Yup. Okay. You're good to go. Woo. There we go. Look, yes. okay. So there's our chat. Yes. I feel like... Welcome back to the Superdorf Show live, everybody. I can't tell if I feel more like the old guy or the new guy. Um, I mean, you're kind of... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think if you have a balanced life, you're always both. That's my opinion. How, how do you... <laughs> uh, you like know what I mean. I feel like the new guy because I have no idea what's going on, and I had to, like... Feel like I was just running around with no idea, and now I feel like <laughs> old guy because the technology was not working how it's supposed to. Yeah. You and me both. It's it's been crazy but for a minute. Jeremy, you are the new guy, and I am in fact the old guy. That's yeah, that's the way it is. You know, are what does that make me? The really old guy. I guess so. Thanks, Thomas. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So here's the way it works. I have a little buddy here. This is a snake that surprisingly still does not have a name. If you have not been on the Superdorf show before, if you stick around to the end, we're going to take your name suggestions and whoever wins, Jeremy's going to read them out to us anonymously. I will pick the name that I think is best suited to this little dude. And whoever comes up with the best name, the snake will be named that forever. We've actually had a lot of really fun run-ins with this at Retic Fest and stuff like that, where people will run through the, you know, the snake room and go find the snakes that they've named, take pictures with them and stuff like that. It's pretty fun. But this is actually going to be a cornerstone animal. It's a male. This is definitely one you're going to want to win um, because I think he's going to end up be having a lot of lineage moving forward. He is, for us, the very first Superdorf doublehead albino pied. We took a really beautiful, and this is John Cashman, my buddy that did the breeding, sun-fired purple pied and ran it to a gorgeous TK Kalatoa female and produced this guy. He's a year and a half, almost two years old, so obviously using that tiny female did the trick, and hopefully we will get the piebald especially, and as well as the purple coming out in the Superdorf very soon so this guy's name's going to be critical you're definitely going to want to stick around till the end so it's so in that chat we have from Sue's sway lu the dinosaur is that a name <laughs> it's like that's a good that's a good start that's... well save your names till the end guys yeah seriously we're gonna put up on the ground i think I she think was calling you the dinosaur Gary. oh wow. yeah she yes. there we go hey Susie, that might have been Susie... it Susie's our sponsor, by the way. Thanks, Susie. Thank you, Susie. Susie works for our sponsor. That's an important Susie. You better treat that Susie like your most treasured possession. I like a lot of the people that work for our sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> Inside joke, if you know, you know. Probably our Patreon would know. So tonight, we actually have a giveaway. This is going to be for the, um, for the Patreon after party, right, Jeremy? What do we have? We have this poster. Let me see if I can. Um, hold on, can I'll we, show you. Can we get an angle of that? I, I don't Let's know, see. but guys, wait until you see this. This is a 100% authentic U.S. Arc poster. Guys, take a look at that. It's massive. It's, like I said, it's authentic. You're going to want to take that home. So, yeah, that's going out to our Patreon later tonight. Oh, my gosh, I can't wait for that. I'm really excited about that one. It's actually pretty huge. It's like two feet by five oh, feet, yeah. maybe six feet. Um, yeah, taller than me. I stole it from NARBC, oh, so hopefully a U.S. Arc doesn't miss it. But it's like when you go to the movie theater and you steal the big cardboard cut out of Luke Skywalker and that's, that's worth exactly a ton right. of money later. Yeah. So this is a priceless <laughs> item. 
This is not something that you can buy. This is official U.S. Ark memorabilia stolen by me. Okay, not technically stolen. I want it at a U.S. Ark auction. But I'm going to be giving it away during our Patreon after party. So if you want to jump on Patreon, look up Reach Out Reptiles. You can jump in there real quick. And anybody that joins us tonight, out of everyone that joins, somebody's going to win it. So that would look awesome in any reptile room. Any, any, seriously. Or bedroom. Well, that is exciting. So guys, once again, join our Patreon, and you could be walking away with this Fighting for Our Freedom U.S. Arc poster. Moving on to a little bit of small talk, Garrett. I gotta, I gotta tell you something that's, it's kind of taking a step back. If you know about this, right? I might know a little bit about this, but I honestly do kind of just get pulled around the shop these days. It's true. He thinks he's running the show here. It's, it's all this. <laughs> well, t tell us what's going on, Jeremy. No, it's not, right now, it's not it's, this it's, anymore. It's, <laughs> we are putting more energy into our TikTok. So far, we have uploaded a couple videos on there. If you guys want to check them out, go ahead and do that. And then we're also going to be putting a little more energy into our Patreon because we really appreciate the support we get from there. Still gonna be, have a presence on YouTube. Not oh yeah, we'll be doing these live streams monthly, exactly. like we're talking about. We'll drop a exactly. video every now and then. It'll be good. Yeah, but who's good. a dinosaur now, huh, Susie? I got a TikTok. What's <laughs> <like> up? <laughs> so so yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. If you guys want to find us, make sure. It, like, if you guys want to keep up to date, what's the best place to find us, Jeremy? Is it gonna be up Patreon? It's gonna be Patreon. That it's gonna be. Yeah, TikTok. You'll TikTok, see all Patreon. kinds of fun little behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Pretty cool little Get mini adventures. Yeah. yeah, should be good. should be good. So very cool. Well, um, other updates. So the breedings are full swing now. That's pretty exciting. Jeremy only gets to peek around downstairs a little bit, but um, I'm taking over all the breedings there. So I'm like watching all the females get big and thick and chunky and fat. And then if you have if you've been on our breeder tier Patreon. You know what I'm talking about when I talk about the P scale. So we got a lot of uh, P's, P3s and 4s. That's when you want to breed them, and even some P5 and 6s. I think our first clutch in shop is probably going to be our Karampas, which is very exciting because it's been two years since there have been any Karampas in the U.S. hatch. So that's, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked for that. And on Patreon, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the breedings that are going on. I know that a lot of you guys like the behind-the-scenes specifics. So it is cool. It gets better every year. You know, I mean, I've said that before, obviously, but, you know, every year you have new ones like this little guy, our, our uh, Sunfire Doublehead Purple Pied, growing up and jumping into, like, the, the genetics pool that we can use. Uh, or we'll have, you know, for example, like we have a slight chance these Karampas I'm talking about, they're going to be F1s again. It's the, the wild caught female that's gravid. But there's a slight chance of F2s, which is a big deal, right, from a selective breeding standpoint. I mean, I have had six wild caught Karampas in the past. And, you know, those are just whatever someone caught on the island. But when I get a whole clutch of them and I get to be like, ooh, that one's exceptional. And ooh, this one's exceptional, and then put those together for the next generation. That's where stuff really starts to take off from a selective breeding standpoint. So I'm I'm pretty excited that we're we're rolling into it. I think 2024 is going to be a a good year. Plus a lot of locality crosses that you guys have been requesting stuff that you really haven't seen as much before. Um, I mean, like we said in a in a who remembers in the last live stream where we talked about this is like Avengers Phase Two. Right? We got all the backstories on everyone. We've brought them all together. Everyone knows the players. And we're about to go into outer space. You know, and I, <laughs> I can definitely see it. Into outer space. You I like that? It. I love that. I love it. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. yeah, we've been busy around the shop, too. So, Rompas, I can't get over that. Really. Absolutely. Well, I want to take a minute, just talk about our virtual and in person tours. Guys, if you haven't already, Please come by, join us, have a little fun, and see the shop for yourselves in person or virtually. Garrett, what's the best thing about our tours that we offer? You got to tell me. <laughs> well, it, I mean, it's pretty fun. We've had, um, so we've actually had some people drive in from three, four hours away. Uh, we've done ones where the parents wanted, it's like, I would have thought they would have booked like a kid's birthday party, which we do yeah. that stuff. But instead, they're like, nope, we want a 90-minute tour with Garrett 
Our kids are going to ask them all the questions. We want the whole time spent on them. So they would have like very specific questions. Like I know, uh, let's see, we have one coming up on Saturday where they're really interested in the full life cycle thing. So I think these guys are actually using us to teach their kids a little bit about the birds and the bees. Um, yeah, oh, from God, a snake perspective. Yeah, yeah. Once we get into the hemipenes, they're going to be really confused, I think. But Hadley will will keep it, uh, you, you know, I don't know, relatable, I guess. Garrett, again, right. straight to outer space. But, no, the tours are cool because they're customized. They're for you. What do you guys want to see? What do you guys want to know? So we've had some tours where people are like, I really want to uh, introduce myself to all of the different localities. And so they have gone through and they just see, they check out all the wild caught stuff that we brought, you know, so they can see the adults, like the ones on our poster. Um, <clears throat> and then taking a look at the babies, yearlings, two-year-olds and stuff. They've done those things. I know a lot of people have booked a little tour. Uh, here's one cool thing. I don't know that you even know this, but um, if you book a private tour and then you buy a snake, I don't know if there's like a certain time frame in there, maybe, you know, within the next... 30 days or something like that you have to ask joe i'm making all this stuff up but if you buy a snake later then we'll discount the price of the tour on the snake oh yeah so if you're buying a snake anyway it's basically like getting a free private tour um which is pretty cool because people will come in they'll be able to like pick our brains on what snakes they want look at the parents see all the siblings it's almost like your private reptile show and then you can buy a snake walk away and if it was like i don't know what it, I honestly, I don't even know what they cost. Say it was a two hundred fifty dollar tour, you know, then you get two hundred fifty bucks off your snake, and the tour was free. So that's a really good way to use it, where people are like, okay, this is specifically what I want. I want to make sure I get exactly the right animal. They'll travel in from out of town, pick it up. They can buy the snake, and we'll ship it to them. We do a a great job shipping with uh, our sponsors, by the way. Yeah, ship your reptiles. Thank you, Susie and the gang. But yeah, what's wrong, Thomas? Oh, oh, good. We're back. It was censored. Yeah. You didn't want to know what I just did. That's, that's just terrible. Like, that's just like free money. Think about it, because that's money you would. We're already gonna do going to a. It's, I mean, pulses off kind of thing. Oh, buddy. Yep. Absolutely. I have a line on here that's all scribbled out, Jeremy. Yeah. I'm... Should I read it up? Definitely. Not. <laughs> I kind of want to read it. Guys, make sure to drop a like on this video if you think Jeremy's killing it. This is your first show that you're yeah. hosting, right? I think he's doing a great job. Give him some love in the chat. Appreciate that. <laughs> Not too much, though. My head will get too big. Um, but, Garrett, we got to talk about it. I heard you in the other room. Yeah. You get a call from the LA Zoo. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yes and no. Yes and no. That, what does that mean? Come on. Yes, we got a call from the LA Zoo. No, I don't want to talk about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Come new on. guy. You can't give you, away I all mean, the you're secrets. Usually the one I'm to... like, what's scribbled out here? That one's one I was okay talking about. But the other one was. No, we're not talking about what's going on with the LA Zoo yet. Man, okay. Too soon. Too soon. So well, maybe in the future, maybe. Yeah, it was. It, I'll, I'll say this: um, the reptile curator's name is Ian. And he was like, hey, whatever. And I, I, he called me for some reason. And we were talking about stuff. And it was kind of cool. I was like, uh, I think I actually know you. I was like, were you there in like the late 90s? And you guys know a lot of, a lot of you do anyway. I grew up in L.A. during like my teenage years and stuff like that. So I had met Ian before. And so that was kind of cool. Him, I mean, he called me kind of out of the blue it was something that was uh, set up by a friend of ours, Dennis uh, McNamara. Thank you, Dennis, for that, by the way. So that was pretty cool. But, yeah, he didn't know that he knew me from when I was a kid. It's like I have all these, like, pre, you know, anyone on social media knowing who we are connections that every now and then resurface or I'll tell a funny story and people will remember that stuff. So he remembered my basilisks from back in the day. But that was pretty cool. But that's all I'm going to talk about. Hey, I respect that. We'll, we'll lay it to rest. You guys leave it to say. Jeremy. If I, as if I don't uh, spoil enough surprises as it is. Now we got a new guy over here that doesn't know what he's allowed to and not allowed to talk about. You guys I, are going to. Yeah, Patreon is going to eat you alive. I, <laughs> they're going to be like, so Jeremy, tell this? me about this. Tell me about that. What's the secret project? <laughs> they're always like, where are the hidden snakes? And what's the this? And, you know, I, it's funny. They're here. I'll find them. <laughs> 
What's you're not supposed to deliver on it. Keeps out of snakes. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, asking the real questions right now. <laughs> that is funny. I will say this: um, we had the the local, so we did the Oktoberfest thing yeah. lately, and that was pretty cool. And people found out that we exist around here, so we had the Butler Eagle, which is the local newspaper come down and take a bunch of pictures of the shop and do interviews. They were actually asking about like the educational programs and tours and stuff like oh, that too. That's um, yeah, so that was really neat. We got to show them all around and um, that'll be pretty fun. So if any of you guys are local, keep an eye out for the, uh, the Butler Eagle. And then some of us were wearing like Jeremy's sporting the Ship Your Reptile swag. So I think Ship Your Reptiles will be in there by default too <laughs> in the local paper here. So that'll be pretty fun. Definitely. But that was pretty cool. She was, um, she was, she just kept saying, "You have got to be the weirdest business in the area. You've got to be the weirdest." And I'm like, "Well, I'm not re- really from the area, so I'll let you be the judge of that." But yeah, oh, it was sweet. pretty cool. She even like pet karma and you know oh, the yeah. big snake and stuff like that. So she's she was getting into it That's at first. Cool. They were like staying back her and the photographer but afterwards like this is pretty cool so we had some fun with them maybe we'll some change some minds here locally it should be a good time yeah maybe absolutely so super chats you know how this works you get a super chat if you guys super chat in super chats speaking of the educational stuff we need your guys help um there's uh, some stuff that we're trying to do to double down on the educational stuff here. We've been throwing some extra time, money, and work into it and everything here, and, and it's been pretty stinking cool. A lot of it is um, outreach for kids, like school assemblies and things like that. But we need some... We need to get together and do some advertising for kids. I don't quite know how this is going to marry up with like YouTube and social media, um, but I've, uh, it's just really been pressed on my heart lately to kind of get the, g- the next generation going on this stuff. You know, if we're breeding super dwarves, a lot of what we do, we see our target demographic. They're people that are, you know, kind of like me, say they're like ages 35 to 45, they're spending money, they want to invest and buy snakes, which is great. I mean, that's, that's our, our main clientele. But, you know, especially as we're talking to the gal from the newspaper this morning, it's like there's so many kids that are living completely disconnected from animals, right? And so, you know, at the very best, they're watching maybe YouTube or something like that, watching online and doing that kind of thing. But we really want to get people, like a hands-on experience is something that sticks in your mind and your heart for the rest of your life. So she was telling me stories about her experiences with kids when she was little. She was asking me, she was asking Hadley, how did you get into this? And, you know, we all had stories about when we were kids. So <clears throat> we Jeremy, need... That's a super chat. Uh-uh. That's a super We got chat. a super Call it chat. out. Got what do we got? Let's talk Who herbs. is it? Oh, Let's what's up? Here. Thanks, Thank dude. Thank you so much. You Appreciate you, man. Yet, but that guy's name is Stephen Lewis, and Stephen we, Lewis. we don't talk to Stephen Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm we, just kidding. We only talk about herbs. <laughs> so much wow thank you steven that's a i appreciate that um steven's super involved in in his community we talked a lot about uh animal control side because he's uh an animal control officer am i saying that right steven i don't know but yeah thank you for the super chat so that is going to go towards bolstering our educational program and beefing that up as much as possible we've been advertising it really hard but we need to get some signage out front of the shop wait shut up shut up shut up we got another super chat oh oh oh, who is it Susie. Susie, what's up, Susie? Susie has a snake named after her. If you stick around to the end, maybe you'll have one named after you. That's cool. Right on. Yeah, there's always that chance. Thank, Thank you very you so much. much. Appreciate Susie. you guys. Appreciate that. So yeah, all of those super chats are gonna go towards, um, you know, building out. We're gonna throw it all into Hadley's budget. Hadley's amazing. She knows what she wants. She has been working and doing a lot with very little for a long time. So we're gonna try to uh, beef up her account a little bit and let her start to really invest hard into education with the kids, which is her passion and stuff is like, not just, you know, Hadley never got into it for the super dwarves or anything like that, but she's a hardcore animal lover. She has her degree in wildlife biology and stuff like that. So trying to get her stuff built out a little bit more. Full show. Yes, sir. That's about the kids. Will somebody please think of the children? 
So we. What's gonna, our new our main topic of the night, Jeremy? Main topic of the night, mystery reptile at reach out. What's our new mystery reach out? Because we all the thumbnail. Yes. We holding out. Looks like. What do you guys think? Think Reach Our Reptiles is going to be working with more reptiles uh -oh, now. Elizabeth Fortino, another $10. Thank you so much. Whoa, thanks, Liz. Woot, woot. Love that. Super chat. All right. Thank oh, the kids. So what do, you guys, kids. what do you guys think? Reach Our Reptiles is going to start. So you know we work with Dwarf and Superdorf. You right. might not know that we're uh, expanding the collection over here. Any guesses? Do we have any guesses in the chat over there, Jeremy? Let's see. What do you think? No guesses, folks. Your thumbnail was a little bit dirty. It was. It, it was potentially misleading. <laughs> I, I have to. If I did mislead people, hey, my apology. <laughs> a little bit of bait and switch. We, we have maybe some house snakes. Potentially house potentially snakes. House snakes. That's we definitely wrong. have some house snakes. Now, why would you think that? Why would you think a house snake? Yeah. Uh, Geckos, maybe. I mean, if they've watched the videos with Ashley. We have the, the secondary YouTube channel, Wild World TV. And if you've ever binge-watched all those videos, I know why you think house snakes. Someone's saying ball pythons? <laughs> <laughs> kind Do of. know you? Kind of. Interesting. Yeah? Bearded dragons. Someone says dinosaurs. Ooh. That's a stretch. I would like that. That would be insane if we did. Or is that just Susie calling me old again? It, I, it is actually. It's from Susie. She might just be calling you. Old. Thanks, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, as a uh, part of it, so we have, you know, we have our, our breeder animals here. Good guess with the house snakes. Obviously, we keep and breed house snakes. Yeah. I think we've hatched. I don't know. I, I have about maybe 100 hatchlings that have come out that just need to be individualized and put away right now. So we definitely breed house snakes. But um, no, we're not. We're not going to be sharing what? house snakes with anybody. You guys know this. Does anyone know? I I, asked, I got asked this question a ton at Tinley. Probably as many questions about how uh, house shut snakes. Up, as shut up! Shut up! Shut oh, up! Oh, oh, what do we got? Uh, SoCal herbs. Thank you for that super chat. We appreciate Matt, that, buddy. Thank you. What's up, buddy? Mr. Bernard and pulling up from the West Coast. Cheers. <laughs> Man, I gotta get used to. It. I want him to shut up. Yep. <laughs> it's easier than you would think. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll well, we like once you work for me for a little bit, you build yeah. up some inner rage and just okay, turn it I loose like live that. on YouTube. Yeah. That's the best advice I can give you. Oh, <laughs> All right. So it, it's not those things, uh, although some of you guys were pretty close. So it's not that we're going to be breeding a new species or working with that or, or investing in anything new. Those of you guys know, that know about the house snakes – Yes, I definitely have a house snake problem, um, but that is not to share with the world. My plan that I was telling everyone at Tinley is just to get a pit and put all the house snakes in it and dive into it like Scrooge McDuck, you know, and just have a yeah. swimming pool full of multicolored house snakes for my own pleasure and never sell or share any of them. <clears throat> Man, I still have my voice back from Tinley. It was a good weekend. So, no, I've got a couple of the new animals here, actually. I'm pretty excited. Do you guys want to see some of them? We should. Um, Thomas, do you know where the ambassador animals like the corn snakes and ball pythons were? There's a new one named Hash Browns. Can you go get that? You can do sure, it, buddy. I have no idea what's in there. But... I know the snake. I believe in you. You'll be fine. Hash Brown. Hash Brown. Got the name. Hash Brown's a new one. So Hash Brown. Let's... Is, that, is that like the name of this? That's the name of the snake. That is not the morph, although, okay. you know, that is totally could be a morph. Maybe we'll name our next yeah, new morph a hash brown. That sounds a little less exciting. Usually breed away from brown. So let's see. Oh, come here. Yeah. I am ridiculously excited about these. Look at this little guy right here. So this is a species, and there are not very many of them, that I have wanted my entire life and not had. Uh, and I'm 40. So this joins the ranks, or leaves the ranks, rather, of things like an American crocodile, a Komodo dragon, a yellow belly sea snake, kind of the lifers for me. Um, but this is probably the most, a blackhead bushmaster would be on there. This might be the most realistic. So... This was wonderfully donated 
to the U.S. Arc Auction um, by Iguana Land. That's Thai Park. They have Iguana Fest going on this weekend, by the way. If you guys are anywhere near South Florida, you need to go. I went to the first one with my daughter. Um, she was only five. She's 12 now. So it's been a little while, but what an incredible facility. So for Hadley, the kids, and the ambassador animals, we needed a lizard. We can't just show up to these reptile educational things with, uh, you know, 300, uh, you know, retics and a house snake all the time. So we actually got, this is a baby rhino iguana. Look, he's still got the blue spot. I got a male-female pair. And those of you guys that know, there's a bunch of weirdos that go to these reptile shows, including some named Christopher and Adeline that got married at the U.S. Ark auction that I won these lizards at. So this is Christopher, and his lady friend is Adeline. They are our new baby pair of rhinoceros iguanas, which is ridiculously exciting. These things are like reptilian puppies, and I just cannot wait until they grow up. Isn't that thing cute? Look at that. Yeah. He's just like so smiley and sweet. Thomas, can I trade you? Do you know where he goes? You know how to yeah. open the thing? You like push the button and open it? Don't let Adeline out, though. So that's Christopher. So everyone say, bye, Christopher. He's so bye, cute. If you go oh, book man. some tours or educational stuff, you can come help us grow him up. Now, somebody out there said ball python, and we already do have some ball pythons, um, and they're growing. So we've got, let's see, I have, oh, man. Oh, I've got a, a brain fart on who I got my Xanthic from. It wasn't JD Constrictors. It was, it was uh, somebody that was on our Patreon. But anyway, we have a, uh, a Xanthic Firefly something something ball python named Oreo um, that's downstairs. We have one named Amari that was donated by Brian Cusco to my daughter. He found out that a previous one of hers had passed away. It's a hypo GHI spider, I think. And then uh, Johnny Venom, some of you guys know him, was uh, he found out about f one of Finley's snakes that he loved had also passed away, which is the hardest thing about having reptiles with kids is when they lose it. They, like when they lose an animal, they just don't get it. You know what I mean? I'm always like, oh, of all the animals in the shop to pass away, it's just twice as bad when it's the kids. So anyway, we got this beautiful new little animal at NARBC named Hash Brown, and it's uh, a hypopied, and he's like Enchi and something. That keeps happening. So uh, the reason why we got this is because when Brian gave Kira the hypo GHI spider, she kind of fell in love with ball pythons, and for her, I'm always like, why do you like ball pythons? We have all the super dwarves in the world. And she's like, well, I just want one that sits on my lap and does nothing while I read a book. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's a ball I'm python. You know, that's, that's definitely the ball. I'm watching the, the new guy, yet to be named, cruise on his playground all night over there. But the ball python's just kind of chill. So being a hypo pied, she said she really wanted to get into the pied project. I had to explain to her what recessive meant. But at least she can have a pied and make some het pieds that are visual hypos. So we should get some... Hypo, GHI, whatever else I said was in this snake, animals. Yeah, it's, I think it's Enchi and, I don't know, Orange Stream, Pastel. I don't know. Ball Python, guys. What do you guys think? Stuff. What else is in that? I think it's Enchi, Hypo, Pied, something, something. You'll have to let me know. I will say it is crazy, crazy to me. Well, JD, you worked with, with ball pythons. Yeah. Do you remember? I think you sold some pieds. I think I did. I Do you remember them. what they cost I, back then? Oh, my gosh. Back then, selling them for four or 500 Yeah, I think you're right. Think and this was wasn't like, that long ago. It really wasn't. Four or 500 bucks for a pied. Now you can get a hypo pied something, something, something for 600 bucks. Yeah. Which is crazy. Double recessive pied. I mean, it's amazing the uh the opportunities for you know like hobbyist breeding with ball pythons people like to kind of complain about the market and all that stuff the truth is if you want to make money as a breeder you really want to buy like super high-end stuff 
right? And maybe stuff that not everyone else is working with too. I think that's why the Superdorves have continued to do so well. But if it's stuff that a lot of people work with, like piebald ball pythons, you have this other level of just being able to share your work and love with people. I mean, you know, I kind of got this one for Kira, but he'll be an ambassador animal as well. So a lot of kids will get to check out Hash Brown and play with them and stuff like that. The kids named him again. Um, but uh, that'll be awesome for for everybody. So and And I love that we have very different looking ball pythons that we can take so that every time people come to the museum or the zoo or they get a presentation or, you know, uh, pay out for an experience or something, they get to see the different ones. Cause that, I mean, first of all, it teaches you about genetics, Mendelian genetics, biology, inheritance and stuff. Um, which is what my 12 year old daughter is begging me to know because she loves her ball Python and she doesn't love it because of the genetics. She loves it because of the personality and she can read books with her little buddy but it draws her into the biology of it. So I hope to do that with all the beautiful colors and stuff of the, of the few ball pythons that we do have. But the next one is actually Hadley's favorite. It's pretty exciting. Do you see her reaction earlier? I did. That was pretty crazy. I did. So they can't see their reaction on the show. Can they, do we have that clip queued up or not? We have the clip. It's just- They're going to have to go see it on TikTok. All right. Go follow Reach Out Reptiles on TikTok, and we'll throw up. Do you, you don't have it up there yet, though, right? It's oh, coming no. soon? It's coming out, yeah. All right, so watch our TikTok to see Hadley, uh, her reaction to this. It was pretty ridiculous. She's been begging me for these for months. Uh, bear with me here. Hold on. There we go. The knock the dirt off. This is like literally one of her, oh, oh, he's pooping on me. Oh, that's like that acid poop too. Again, this is Hadley's favorite, not necessarily Garrett's favorite. (laughs) But these are African giant millipedes. She is absolutely in love with all things. Look at that thing pooping. Are you catching this? I hope that camera's working. Oh, it's, you're gone. gone. Yeah, we got... Poop falling out of the back of this bug. I've heard very acidic poop. I don't know why kids need to know about these. But it is pretty, pretty stinking crazy. Anyway, this is like something that Hadley has literally, she's worked here for years. She's been begging me for these for at least a year, if not longer. Swap cameras it does feel stuff. super cool how he's like grabbing on to me right now. Going to do this? Uh oh, we're doing experiments. All right, check this out. Oh, this is his poop. I've heard it's like (laughs) burns you. Oh, he's going again. Come on, what Hadley? What are you feeding these things? I don't know if you guys have ever felt one of these, but they're pretty stinking crazy. They're so hard. It's like an armadillo is the best way to describe it. But can you see the legs like clinging to me? It's incredible. Look at that thing rearing its head up. Trying to burn me with its butt acid. They're actually pretty cool. Look, it's acting like its butt is its head. Look at that thing. That is wild. You can see the playground with the little retic going up over there. All right, your camera's on. This one? Yeah. We're dead. Oh, man. Anyway, African giant millipede. Got to keep Hadley happy. She's making amazing stuff. Again, all the super chats and stuff are going to go towards Hadley being able to have stuff like... Oh, here it goes again. How much poop is in one millipede? another super chat. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for that. Oh. Saying hit the like button. That poop was red. What is happening with this millipede? You said what? That is red poop. Oh, I can feel it burning. It feels like a little poison frog when you... I know you're not supposed to do that. Who can resist, right? Look at that. Okay. This is actually pretty stinking. What was not cool was the price of them. So ball python prices have gone down. When I was your age, Jeremy, these were like five bucks in every pet store. And uh, here you go, Thomas. I got a hash brown for you. Unless you want the giant millipede. You, you like the hash brown better? 
These were like five bucks. Now they're like almost two hundred dollars for one like this, and they won't sell males apparently. Only females. Yeah, because the breeders want to keep it on lockdown. Yes. So it's like just keep buying more. Two hundred bucks each. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Oh. Anyway, this is the new animal here, but I want to. I'm gonna want to wash the poop off of my hand yeah. for a minute here, Go ahead. but. If you guys didn't get a chance, you can actually search one of J Jeremy. I almost called you JD. Uh, one of Jeremy's old videos. It's called Phase. I think there's a period in between yeah. each, each one. It's like so an acronym. P H A S E, and you can watch him and how he got started. But why don't you tell us about the animals that you like, and you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, so you guys can get to know our new Superdorf show live host. Animals. While I get rid of this red burning bug poop. <laughs> Look how it just keeps going in the same circle. What are you doing? I feel like it's like just going to burn a hole in me or something. Well, as you kind of mentioned before, I, uh, I was doing my own thing with snakes. I started a business called Phase. I was 14 at the time, and I took some of William Sanford, who was a DC, I believe, his reptiles, gave them to me, and I sold them for a profit that we made. And I really got into the whole ball python and boas that way. Fun. Um, I had to stop. I had other things I was pursuing. Back at it again. So, a little bit about me. We got any other ball python people here? I think I think I saw one or two. I know I saw one or two. Brian Cusco has a good number of ball pythons. You see? Like, hey, That's yeah, what I'm yeah. talking about. My man. My man. Oh, he's not here. <laughs> all right, Jeremy. <sighs> Why are you really here? Are we really just going to air it all out? My dramatic quitting story? Or I wouldn't say. All right. <laughs> Do we just tell him? I don't think we've told everyone yet. We've very much inferred it. My employment status. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So, Patreon knows this. Uh, Patreon people know this, but for those of you who aren't on Patreon, you're lame. And I don't even want to tell you this because you're not there, so you might as well join Patreon. But well, this is a freebie. Is yeah. Yep, this is a freebie. Um, I don't work at Reach Your Reptiles anymore, which is awesome, but also kind of sad because I love everybody here at Reach Your Reptiles. I love the reptile community, and yeah, it was, it was a very fun job, but... Um, Man, when push comes to shove, sometimes you need to step out on your own and do some stuff. So that's what I'm working on currently. But in the meantime, we have the best on the block, Jeremy. So for those of you guys who didn't get introduced to him earlier on the Patreon community, we got Jeremy. He is taking over um, at a social media level, and he's just going to kill it on platforms like TikTok. And like you were saying, we're going to push short form and uh, crush it from there. So the future that. is bright Thanks in this guy's hands. Thank anyway, you. back to your <laughs> regularly yeah. scheduled show. Come on now. Talk about that. Mm, yeah, my future's been good. It's been one week. Um, <laughs> one whole week of one whole week of wow. getting unemployment wow. from the government. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now that takes a week to kick in. Oh really? Darn. Uh, no wonder all my checks have been bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> now my future's pretty good. We're working. We're staying busy. It's a lot of for like just to be transparent. I don't have like a fully fleshed out plan, but what I really wanted to do was go out and do a lot of freelance work and build my own videography business. Um, so that's happening in real time. And uh, if you see me at Target, I'm still hustling. <laughs> yeah. Now, does uh, your girlfriend watch a lot of our live streams? Uh, she's hanging out with friends right now, so that's good. That so unless they're all watching our live stream. I've been telling everyone that Thomas is getting married soon, and so he needs to <laughs> look at him. <laughs> you dog. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, if you guys all want to congratulate Thomas soon on the proposal that he hasn't made yet, that would be great. But I'm you pretty sure six, that's why he's leaving Reach early. Out Reptiles. Because in his head, he's got to grow up a little bit more outside the reptile industry before he let, can get Let married. me just put it this way. I'm 23. I've worked this job for the last three and a half years. I love everybody here, but um, you know what? Sometimes but you got to go But he loves Sianna more. 
<laughs> wow, you just Dang. aired me out like that. That is not. <laughs> Please tell me he isn't trying to be a comedian. I'm not Everybody, that funny. congratulations, Thomas. I am yeah. also not getting married quite as soon as Garrett seems to think so. <laughs> you never know. You never know. The future is bright. All right, let's name a snake. Let's name a diamonds snake. Name a snake. <laughs> <laughs> diamonds are bright, see? Let's see it. Got diamonds on the mind. I'm telling you, it's only a matter of time. Watch out, Sienna. All right, so we you. have a snake. Hopefully you guys have names. There's Again, this is a male. Yeah. He is going to be foundational. He's a double hat, super dwarf, double hat, purple pied. And, of course, we got the sun fairy in there because just like you saw that pied ball python with all that extra orange going on, it looks pretty stinking good. So we need to make the retic version and the super dwarf version of that because who wouldn't love tiny little super dwarf retic that was like a purple albino pied? I think that would be pretty stinking sweet. So go ahead and start uh, commenting the names. Jeremy, you're going to read them off. Yep. I got a chat thing showing over here. Oh, do you? Turn do you? that over. Yeah. Don't want to see who's doing it. We're going to do this totally anonymously, but whoever gets this guy's name, Jeremy's going to write it down, and then we will go name him on his tub, and then the next time you guys come to Retick Fest or something like that, you can check it out. First on the list, we have Moses. 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 All right. There you go. Does it look like a Moses? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Up next. If you slide him through that uh, centipede poop, he'll be parting the red something. <laughs> I got most of it off. I can Ooh. still feel it, though. Those we also have Abraham. Moses and Abraham? Oh, like Father Abraham. Yeah. Had many kids. That'd yeah. be pretty cool. At least I'm guessing. Or Lincoln. It could be either one. <laughs> got... Father Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Purple people eater. There you go. I kind of like that one. Huh? It's different. We got Lewis in honor of the first two super chats. That's ah. completely anonymous, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that, that was anonymous, <laughs> by the way. Uh, Optimus. We have Icarus. Snicker Noodle. I think we already have a Snicker Doodle. So this one would be Snicker Noodle, though. That's pretty close. Uh, yeah, I mean. We did notice we have a couple of Kevins down there today. Tried Pied. All right, take them from the top. Read them all to me again. Go ahead. Last chance. Drop it in the chat if you have a name that you haven't put in. Right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lightning. Okay. lightning Here we go. This one. Okay, ready? Moses, Purple People Eater, Abraham, Tried, Pied, Lewis, Snicker, Noodle, Optimus, Icarus, Alpi, Pepe, Le Pew, um, P PD, Piper, Raiden, and Axel. I like Icarus. Icarus. He's the sunfire, yeah. yeah. Flew a little too close to the sun. Hopefully that Final doesn't mean answer. he'll fail in his breeding attempts. But yeah, I'm I'm feeling Icarus. Who who chatted that one? Icarus was chatted by Zach Bell. Oh, right on! Congratulations, go, Zach. Zach. Well done. Icarus. There it oh, is. Icarus, it. the founding father of the Superdorf Albino Pied Project. That is a cool pretty name. sweet. That's a pretty cool sweet. Name. I love it. All right. Well, I think it's about that time. Thank you guys for joining. Now, if you want to jump over, we're going to do the all Patreon hangout party right after this over here on a couch in the little other studio. And we are going to be giving away this official US Arc banner. It's super nice. It's like that tarp kind of material. It's real thick, yeah. gorgeous yellow green tree python on there. Got to get a second look at that in the after party because, man. That's well, I'll turn the camera there now, and then we can wrap hey, it up. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right. Jump on Patreon. Join yes. the party if you want. Guys. And you can win this gigantic U.S. art poster. It looks a lot bigger than it does on camera. It is a lot bigger than it does. It, oh, it's huge. It's huge. Any reptile icon is it. almost the size of Karma. Head is bigger. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks again for joining. Oh, look at this. Uh-oh, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining. We Nobody can hear you, Gary. You're not talking to the mic. Party. Congratulations, Zach Bell, for the name. And to whoever ends up winning, thank you for everyone in the Super Chat. Yeah, thank you.